How's it going everybody? Yes, you did read correctly. The topic we're going to talk about is how to gank. Everyone who frequently queues solo in this game knows what kind of teammates the game tends to give you. Some of them literally are more of a detriment than a help in a lot of situations. And a lot of that boils down to how they think they're helping in gank situations when they're actually not. The clips at the moment should show this nicely. Before I go into details, I first want to define what a gank is. We're only talking about situations here where it is one person against many. So one vs two, one vs three, or one vs the whole fucking team. When multiple people are involved on both sides, that's a team fight and those require more coordination and finesse than simple ganking. Communication in For Honor is basically non-existent, since consoles don't have a proper chat and on PC the default setting for the chat is off. And who the fuck has voice chat turned on anyways? Concerning in-game communication, I'll maybe make another video, because in last week's Warriors then they said something that rubbed me the wrong way, but we'll get to that another time. But back on topic now. Rule number one, do not fuck with other people's guaranteed punishes. I don't care whether it's guard breaks, parries, knockdowns or whatever. You are in a situation where you know exactly what kind of move is coming next, which will let you time your next attack perfectly to increase the guaranteed damage. Look at the clip, this is exactly what you should not do. The Aramusha fucked with my out of stamina throw twice. This is the basis of ganking. The goal is to kill the enemy in as few hits as possible to minimize his revenge gain. Mindlessly spamming attacks or even worse bashes simply helps the opponent. Let's look at this in a little bit more abstract way. In ganks the players can have three different roles. The first one is, let's call him the enabler, he sets up either damage or CC in some form. Second one is hard CC. Moves that will prevent the enemy from using revenge. Goki's Demon Embrace or Raiders to Peach Charge fall into that category. And the third one is simply dealing damage, but only during appropriate times. Here are a few examples of how and when to set up for your ganking pawn. High damage unblockable moves are usually highly telegraphed both visually as well as with audio cues. Use these to time a guard break and guarantee a hit. People will try to externally parry those moves, so well-timed guard breaks should be easy to land. The next example is just setting up for normal damage. If you anticipate certain behavior of your opponent, you can react accordingly. As you can see, I tried to grab the Nabushi when she dodged the attack. She was able to counter guard break because of my slow ass, but the Glatz Heavy still landed. You can even set up plunge attacks with the guard break. It also doesn't have to be a guard break, you can time your attacks with other bashes as well. With the introduction of Shaman and her change in moveset when Bleed is involved, the combo of PK and Shaman or Nabushi and Shaman became extremely potent. You can help Shaman to land her bite, which is hard CC that denies the opponent to pop his revenge. This clip here shows all three previously mentioned roles. The Nabushi enables the Shaman's hard CC by applying Bleed and then properly follows up with more guaranteed damage without messing with Shaman's bite. Properly executed, this allows for two extra heavies after the bite. Goki's Demon Embrace works similarly. And I'd say it's a move where you can mess with your teammates punish simply because of how much extra damage it confirms. When you have someone helping you land the hug, you have a ton of options. A simple guard break attempt followed by a counter guard break from an opponent staggers him long enough to land it for example. This requires good timing from this Shigoki though, and that's why I don't have a clip. 
To be a little more certain, just try and initiate the move from a blind spot, preferably when the guy's already in some kind of animation. This clip here shows a gladiator that perfectly sets me up for it with his toe stabs. It took me a second to realize what he's doing, but it was a very nice setup. A good example of hard CC that rarely requires a setup is Raiders Stampede Charge. Missing it in a gank situation has little to no negative consequences, so it's extremely viable. In this clip you can see how the raider immediately disengages to let me guard break punish and then charges the opponent. Because it took me a second to realize what's happening my feint came too slow, otherwise we might have been able to finish him without him popping revenge. At the end you can also see how he times his top heavy to theoretically hit after my punish. So well done Mr. 4 star folk. While being carried the opponent takes less damage, so try and make sure to only attack when the guy's pinned to the wall. This covers the two best CC moves in the game. Moving on, you have some that are shorter in duration and allow for less of a follow up or rather timing and positioning needs to be better to get the full damage off. One of the moves is Shinobi's ranged guard break into sickle drain. I don't play Shinobi and that's why you can watch these two here being too retarded to even attempt the range guard break once. I should have never been able to even kill one of them. Utilized properly a long range guard break from my blind spot, I very very rarely can react to it. Another move is Lawbringer's long arm. You can use it as a guard break follow up or just mid fight. Just like with other moves, wait for a moment where the opponent cannot dodge it. He takes full damage during the flip, so your teammates should attack as soon as possible. Repeats are a good way to speed up ganks, as well as team fights. Just be aware that they feed a lot of revenge. And as a last note, sometimes ask yourself, do I even need to gank that person in this situation? Maybe there's something better for you to do on the map. Maybe your health is really low, so better back off. If you arrive late to a fight and just take the kill for no reason, you probably diminish the renown gain for your teammate massively. So keep that in mind as well. This example here shows how my teammate completely ignores my fight, grabs the flag and brings it home. He clearly identified that I don't need help and getting the flag was the better option. Or maybe he just wanted to finish an order, who knows. If you made it this far into the video, you'll probably have realized that this whole thing isn't as complicated as I made it out to be. It's actually just common sense in most cases. People just need to be reminded sometimes that it's not all about them and setting up or supporting a teammate, even if it's just a random guy you met in matchmaking, is the proper way to win a game in a lot of cases. On the other hand, the game most of the time really gives you inbred monkeys as teammates and everything you try is futile anyways. But that doesn't mean that you can simply ignore all that, because if you don't adhere to your own rules, how can you expect others to do so? So don't project unrealistic standards on others if you can't lead by example yourself. By trying to be a better teammate you might show someone something new and he will try that as well in his next game. I hope the video was helpful, thanks for watching guys, laters everybody.